Welcome. We continue our study in the book of Revelation and we have come to Revelation 9 and we're going to just read from verse 1 to 5. Then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. He opened the bottomless pit and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment for five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion, when it stings a man. These workers of evil appeared as locusts to John in the vision. And locusts as such, in spiritual terms, can be found those insects that have spiritual life that devours the harvest, who work in tandem with one another to bring about the destruction of the crop. Now, locusts are very mobile. They they can walk, they can fly, and as they do so, they devour and strip the earth of all of its fruitfulness. But here they have more power. Their power is likened unto scorpions. And if we look at the literal once again, scorpions are predatory, predatory arachnoids with a poisonous sting at the end of their tail. Their venom in the vesicle usually paralyzes or kills the smaller prey. But scorpions are creatures that can really hurt a person. They inflict pain and they inflict harm and then therefore they torment those whom they sting. And that's very important because the enemy will attack anyone and all who come across their path on whom they can put their hooks into. All the inhabitants of the earth are particularly vulnerable those who have made this world their habitation. And the world has no real or effective defense against the attacks of the enemy when they come like this. Under Jesus, again referring to the scriptures that we had read, said to his disciples concerning the enemy, I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So again, as we've said with the previous video and here, we see that the power of the enemy in the believer's life as citizens of heaven, their power is extremely limited in the believer's realm when the believer is actually in tune with Holy Spirit and walking with Jesus. But we are warned to stay vigilant at all, at all times and that it is necessary for us as Christians to watch and pray and to walk with and in discernment all the time listening to Holy Spirit. And then we'll be able to deal effectively with the enemy whenever we come across the enemy and encounter them. And we must always remember that greater is he, Jesus, that is in us than he that is in the world. And once again, it says, John wrote, he said, I wrote to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. If we have overcome the evil one, then anyone that is subject to him is also not a problem. In that sense, I just want to add this, not even the Antichrist, because the one, the evil one, is above them. Well, we always have the victory. We walk triumphal procession with Jesus. We are more than overcomers in him. And the Lord set boundaries for these creatures of darkness as they traverse the earth looking for human prey. And these boundaries are seen as grace. So we have common grace and specific grace and special grace. It's grace because it's undeserved and sovereignly bestowed by God. It is common, common grace because it benefits all who experience it. And in, in common grace, every single person can experience it. And it is intended for the whole human race without acceptance of persons. 
When God said to the enemy, I will put enmity between their, that's mankind's seed, and your seed, that put a marker down. It is unnatural for people to want to side with evil. Because our conscience, the first unsoiled conscience that we get, is a gift from God. So that we will have discernment. This is wrong. This is right. It is inborn to all people, which gives them the power to be the king, kings of the earth. Every one of us have an ability to rule and regulate our own lives and make decisions. It is only with a soiled conscience that a person will seek to serve evil and or the devil and his people or demons. It is distinguished from specific or saving grace where people have accepted the lamb, they've been given a mark on their foreheads and they've actually been translated into the kingdom of light. So this is important. We have the name of the Lamb and the name of the Father in our foreheads. Those who do not have the name of the Lamb and the name of the Father in their foreheads walk according to the flesh or the beast, if you like. So they are 666. They are in body, soul and spirit walking according to the flesh. Special grace is a step further where we've been granted the ability to exercise authority and to rip the enemy apart, to destroy the fortresses and arguments and all the arrogance raised against the knowledge of God, where we are able to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. So, we have seen the juxtaposed position here. Those who are unmarked with the initial mark, which we later learn is actually the name of the Father, and of the Lamb. And later we see that they are mar the, those who do not serve the Lamb are marked with 666, as we shall see later. The grass symbolize, symbolizes the adequate covering. The plants speaks of our fruitfulness. Those who are actually fruitful in this life in the Lord. They have new life. They are fruitful in Christ as well as being the trees, being the trees of righteousness in him. And it was five months because five is the number of grace. And because it's months, it represents a medium term, not days, not years, but seasons. So it's interesting here to learn that there are seasons for blessings, but there are also seasons where we have to go through winter times. There are seasons for the godly. And it could include either, but there are also seasons for the ungodly. Again, God's grace dictates here. There will be summer, there will be autumn, there will be winter, and there will be spring. Kairos, for good or bad, but we know that it will always be under five, the number of grace. And that means mercifully that their power to inflict pain and destruction is limited. But here we see these locusts have the ability to to torment, bazenizo, meaning to test for purity or to torture. Here it includes to vex with grievous pains of body or mind and is used in the gospel when the waves battered the ship and severely hampered any progress they, the disciples could make. Here it is likened unto a scorpion sting which can be very, very painful. In contrast, this is what people experienced and then they came to Jesus. Jesus healed all who were ill, all who were suffering with various diseases and torments or pains, demoniacs, epileptics and paralytics. That's the call for us, you see. We must do the same. We can bring the necessary covering, renewal, strength and fruitfulness that, that we have in Jesus and we can then bring that to people who are still living in this world and release them out of this world to experience that same fruitfulness and eternal life that we are enjoying as citizens of heaven. We have the ability to bring God's message of reconciliation and hope in an eternal abundant life which can start immediately for all who are willing to accept it, to repent from walking in the kingdom of darkness but choose to now walk with the Lamb 
in the kingdom of light, filled with Holy Spirit. And those who are experiencing a foretaste of life without God might just help them to actually reach out to find that fulfillment in God. May we put on our shoes of the readiness of the sharing of the gospel of peace and let us do so and bring down out of heaven God's gospel of peace, salvation, redemption and restoration. Most importantly, importantly introduce people to him in person so that they can escape these woes that befall people because of their disobedience to God's great salvation. So let us go and let us bring that answer to this trumpet's prophetic announcement. Let us bring heaven down from earth, whereas the enemy will release demons from out of the abyss. And we will always be victorious because truly greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And as Jesus said, do not fear. Even the keys of death and Hades are mine. I have all control, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And we are called to be ambassadors to that truth. Blessings until next time.